Hello and welcome back to our quiz game show tutorial series. In the last episode, we talked about how we create the questions and answers and categories for our game show. In this next episode, though, we're going to start work on showing how to display that information via the UI. So let's take a look at how we do that. So in our content drawer, we're going to go into our drawer and add a new folder here for UI. And in the UI, we're going to have the overall HUD of the game. So we're going to go to Widget Blueprint. And we'll call this W Game. Okay. And in the Game HUD, you're going to have various options in here. The first thing we're going to have in here is a Widget Blueprint for the question. So let's do Question. And the question will also have another one beside of that, which could be the answers. Okay, so let's go into the question first of all. So the question is simply just going to be a, a border. I'm going to put in there. And we're we'll designing the border as such. We're going to go to the brush color and we'll just change it to something different and let's go for more that sort of color we'll drag it up there as well just to make things match actually i won't do that we'll make it a bit more muted there we go there we go okay so that's our border and next we're going to go to the brush over here and do draw as rounded box and let's change the draw as here, rounded box here, details and the outline settings to rounding type, the fixed radius option. And we'll do a corner radii of 35, 35, 35, 35. Let's just nicely round out the corners for us. And let's put in the outline here. We'll make it white. Change the alpha here. And give it a width of 10. Yeah, quite happy with that. Next, we need some text in here. So let's bring in our text, bring that in there. And we'll make sure that when we're using the outline that we add padding enough to not have the outline overlap with the text. So we're gonna go to padding over here and just add some padding to this. I'm gonna do 30. And we will make that variable and rename it because we're good game developers. That's what we do. We name things properly. And there's our question. Now, it won't be obviously this size in the end. Uh, you know, this will be set to uh, fill screen over here. And design on screen will push it right down. But essentially, that's what we have there. Now, you may want to do other things on it too, to like say, okay, I want it to display like the type of category it's in or what we're doing as well. And we can do that too, if we want you to. So if I go ahead and put on that border, we can inside that text, sorry, you're going to right click on text, wrap with overlay. And the text here, I'm going to want it to fill up the whole entire screen, just fine. And the overlay though, I'm going to put an image in. And the image I'm going to put to the right hand side here. And we'll make it stretch out the whole sides there. Actually, I'll make it a center in the vertical there, actually, there we go. And I'm going to put a little icon. I'm going to make a little, like, fun little icon for it. So I'm going to go into uh, font, uh, no, uh, free icon. And search, uh, sorry, web search called flat icon. And let's search for the word history. And let's see what we've got in here that we can make use for history. Um, I don't know how that history is usually depicted. Probably like a car, maybe a castle type thing. Or Roman. Let's type in something Roman. Yeah, something like this would be quite good, I think. So I'll do that. I'm going to pick maybe the black and white one. Yeah. And download that there. And we go and make a new folder in here for the textures and bring that in there okay so 
So there, we're going to make a material. And we'll call this one M category icon. And oh, put out its own little folder as well. Keep it a bit more organized. There we go. And because it's going to be a UI material, I want to change the type that this is using. So you change the type of material by clicking on the main node here and going to material domain and changing it to UI material. And we're bringing a texture. Now we've only got one at the moment, but we're going to assume that we're going to have more for the other categories later. So I'm going to drag that in and I want to use this as my final color. Now, I just want to make sure that this is white the whole entire time. So even though it's a black image, I need to flip it. So I'm going to take the R value here and do one minus and bring it to the final color. Now, you're going to see here, it's going to give us a big white square. The reason being is that this has actually got a mask on it. It's a PNG. So I need this to be masked too. So let's go change the blend mode here to masked. Actually, I'm going to change it to translucent. The reason why I want to change the translucent is because if I want to change the render opacity of it in the widget, it needs to be translucent to be able to do that. Mask is either off or on. It can't do in-betweens. So opacity gives us a bit more freedom there. And with opacity, I'm going to plug in the alpha there like that. Okay. That is our image. Now, the reason why I'm leaving it white is because it's a lot easier to manipulate its tint inside of the widget. So it's a good idea to do this. Now, also in here, because we want to use this for other categories, it's a good idea to change the texture to be a parameter. So convert to parameter. And we'll call it icon. And apply that. Okay, so if we go back to that material, there's a category icon. I'm going to create a material instance of this. And we'll do cat icon history. Okay, and there is our history one. And we can do other for other different categories there too. Now, how do we know what category we're in and what value we're going to show here? Well, we're going to write about that later when we do category selection. But first, we just want to see what it looks like on here. So I'm going to go back to my question over here and click on the image I've added. Go to the brush and I want to add that icon history to the image there. And you see it's going to pop up down here. Image size is going to be quite small. By default, I want to make it a bit bigger to the size of maybe the text block here. So I want that to be probably, let's say, 128 by 128. Uh, let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go 256 by 256. And just trying to find a nice style for it, basically. And what I'm thinking why is actually, is if I do a custom on screen here, and we can play about with different sizes for this. If I change the height of this to, let's say, 250. Uh, no, it's 200. Like that. And the width here will do 1000. Okay, so it's obviously stretched. So let's bring it down to 128 by 128. That's a bit better. Um, but I want it to be a bit more stylistic. So what I'm going to do down here is change the opacity of this to 0.3. Bit good there. And uh, maybe 0.2, actually, to be down a bit more, 0.1. Yeah, like that. Um, but again, stylistically, what I'm thinking of doing is I want to go to the render transform and I'm going to scale it up by two. Now it's going to overlap the edges here. That's totally fine. Because what I want to do is I want it to cut it off at the border. So on the border, click the border, you know, can see an option for clipping. Change that to clipped bounds. And you'll see it'll cut off the edges of where our image is overlapping there. Okay. And what I'm going to do with that image is I'm just going to rotate it and move it around a little bit more stylistic. So we're going to do something like this. Move it a bit more to the right here. Yeah, kind of like that. That's pretty nice. Okay, and this, let's uh, make that variable. Name it image category icon there we are okay with the question here we'll leave it like that i think but you can also change the font alignment whatever it may be in that too okay so let's uh, close the question and let's go to the answer 
So the answer is actually going to be very, very similar to the question. So I'm going to copy a lot of what we've done in the question over to the answer because stylistic, I want to keep it sort of similar. So I'm just going to copy all of it first of all. Go to the answer, paste it in. In this case, I don't want the icon. Click that. The text block I do want in because that's not going to be a question. That's going to be the answer, a uh, possible answer. So that'd be answer. Uh, but in here, I want to make it easy for players to identify like, if it's A, B, C, or D, basically. So we're going to go ahead and wrap the text here with a vertical box, uh, no, vertical, horizontal box. Okay. And we're going to put in another text block there. And for now, just type in letter A dot. And I'm just going to put in answer index as the name of it. Like so. Okay. So if I do desired or customer screen, we'll do that there. That width there, we'll say 100. And we'll say 200 in height. Maybe, uh, no, 100. And, yeah, 100 in height. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, there we go. So now let's see if we can start putting this together and compiling it and seeing how it looks composed with the question and all the answers together. But before we do that, we want to make this a actually editable. So what I'm going to do is going to go into the graph here. And I want to know what is the index for the child that this is in. Um, so if I make a variable in here because it's a very simple there's only four of them i can just hand code it in it's pretty simple we'll do um index we'll call that be text make the editable and on a pre-construct we're going to take the answer index set text plug that in do that and we'll set a default of index here to a Okay, now let's go back to the game HUD here. Now the game HUD is going to consist of different sort of pages to it. It's going to have like the calorie selection, the question, and other pages like welcoming the guests and so on. So what we're going to do in here is have a widget switcher to handle switching between the different types of screens. So the widget switcher, and then I'm going to put in the question screen. So the question screen, we're going to have in here a canvas panel. And actually, let's make this its own thing, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's go into user interface, widget blueprint, and do oop, question screen. Where possible, break things up. Makes it life a lot easier. So yeah, in here, we're going to do canvas panel. And at the bottom of the screen here, we're going to have a vertical box. And we'll size that to be 1,000 in the X. The Y will do 500 for now. And we're going to put that in the anchor at the bottom here. So if I hold down Control and Shift and click the button, it'll move it down. We're going to add in the question. And there it is. And then we're going to add in the answers. And the answers are going to be in a grid format. So we we'll do grid, uniform grid. And we're going to do answer. And we can plug those into there. So one there, one there, one there, one there. Okay. I'm actually going to reorganize that a little bit. So it's one A, B, C, D. Yeah. So to get it looking half decent, the grid panel here, we need to make sure that the contents of this actually slide and fill out the whole entire space. Okay. So I want to make sure I hit fill on the size box over here and then on the individual spaces here i'm going to make sure that they are set to fill horizontally and vertically as well so I'll set all my answers and fill fill okay next i want to do is add a little padding in between them so and go down to padding and we'll do bottom padding actually let's do 
these top two, do top padding here of say 20, and bottom padding of 10, and the bottom two here we'll do top padding of 10. Yeah, looking a bit better. Um, and then left and middle, we'll do here, padding. Uh, we'll do the right 10 there, and here the left do 10 there. Okay. And on each of these, we can actually indicate what letter they are now. So it's B dot there, C dot there, D dot there. Okay. And it's a good idea to make sure these are in the right order because we're going to use the indexes to match up with what we've got in the data asset. So A would be the first one, B would be the second one, third one would be C, fourth one would be D. So make sure they line up a bit there. And let's, just, let's lift this off the bottom of the edge of the screen. We have the vertical box here, position Y, do minus 50. Bring it up a bit there. Okay, not too bad. Okay. Um, uniform grid panel, I might actually say that one not to fill vertically there. I'm going to just do like that. Uh, why is that one looking wider than that one? Or am I tripping? Uh, I was called the padding at the bottom of this. So let's go to padding here. Bottom here, we'll do 20. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. We like that. So go into there, question screen, and then go to the game HUD. And we're going to add that to our switcher here. So that is it statically built um, or blocked out. And normally when I'm building UI, that's what I'm going to do is I'll block it all out. But then later on, we'll put in the functionality to make it more dynamic and flexible. So there you go. As I said, we're going to make it more flexible and more dynamic later on where we can make it swap what questions are visible. And we'll go through that in the next part, which you can find right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You'll find all my videos there early from just $1 a month. And a massive thank you to all our patrons for their continued support in the channel. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.